A hungry bear weighing 700 newtons. 70 kilograms, 150 pound bear. And yeah, maybe it's a small bear. Uh, walks out on a beam in an attempt to retrieve a basket of goodies hanging at the end of the beam. I guess picnic basket would be too close to copyright. Uh, see figure below, the beam is a uniform weight of 200 newtons and it's six meters long and supported by a wire at an angle of 60 degrees. The basket weighs 80 newtons. Draw a free by diagram of the beam. Good, because that's the you know, first thing we're going to do anyway. Um, yeah, okay. Free body diagram. So we have force, gravity, goodies. We have force, gravity, beam. We have force, gravity, bear. I'm not going to write forward bear because no space. This will be tension. Uh, yep, and that's a free body diagram for the beam. And then we're probably going to have some sort of force here, force normal, maybe a force, uh, some sort of force in the y direction. I'll call actually I'll call this um, force. Um, pivot in the x direction, force pivot in the y direction. I actually don't know. They could, I don't know if the directions on those are correct or not. Um, basically, if I get a negative number, then I knew I drew the arrow in the wrong direction. But I'm just going to leave it those directions like so. Um, and then that force tension is going to be the same as tension up there. So that is basically the free body diagram which we're then going to convert into torques so that when the bear is at x equals one find the tension n tension in newtons of the wire supporting the beam and the components of force exerted on the wall that's what we did that force pivot uh, x and y on the left of the beam okay so we're going to start by looking at the sum of all torques so since it's not rotating, the sum of all torques are going to equal zero. And we can basically say all the clockwises, clockwise equal all the counterclockwise torques. So the torque, first torque we're going to do with is the torque due to tension. And that's the only torque causing it to, I'm going to say the pivot point is right here. Um, that way I don't have to, I don't have to include the forces on the pivot in torques because if the uh, axis of rotation is at the um, if the axis of rotation is at the same place as the force then the radius the moment arm for the force is zero doesn't create a torque so long story short you can choose anything you want as a pivot point that's the logical choice for this for at least this uh, equation we're going to put up so we have torque due to tension creating counterclockwise that's going to be countered by torque force gravity bear minus torque force gravity beam minus torque force gravity goodies and there's a sidebar here torque equals r cross f and cross product is um, how perpendicular two vectors are. So it's going to be R perpendicular F or RF perpendicular. So in this case here, the all the gravities are going down, which are perpendicular to the beam, but the tension in the wire is not. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to break down tension into um, I'm going to call this tension y. Actually, I'll do it this way. This will be tension x. This will be tension y, where tension y is the perpendicular portion. And so, long story short, cross product, we're going to use sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors, r and um, tension there. All right. So now I'm going to write this out in a and we know this equals zero because there is no angular acceleration. Because uh, torque equals I alpha. If alpha equals zero, 
the whole sum of all torques equals zero. So now I'm going to write this out, and I'm going to say that the torque due to tension is going to be tension times R of the beam. So um, I'm going to say R beam sine of theta equals, and I'm just going to move the negatives over to the other side, the torque due to the bear. So the torque to the bear is going to be the position of the center mass of the bear, which is at 1. So it's going to be R um, mass bear times gravity times R bear plus, now we're going to look at the torque due to the beam. We're going to use the center of the beam as the center of mass. So it's going to be mass beam G, mg, R beam over 2 because we're going to use the center mass. It's, the center mass is going to be in the middle. Now we're going to do the torque due to the picnic basket, which is going to be mass basket or goodies. I, I guess we use G for goodies. Uh, times G times R beam because all of the mass is concentrated at the end of our beam. Um, yes, I'm going to copy and paste this. This is kind of going to be an abuse of my digital whiteboard, but that's okay. Well, maybe it's not okay. I don't care. It's going to happen either way. Whoop. Divide both sides by R beam sine theta, and this gives us our tension. We want to find the tension, right? Tension, yep. And so now we're going to put in all these many, many variables. So mass bear, gravity of the bear is the weight of the bear, which we know is 200. 200 times the position of the bear, which is 1, plus mass of the beam. Oh, nope, the mass of the beam, the bear is 700 newtons. 700 newtons. The beam is 200. So mass of the beam times gravity of the beam is 200. The length of the beam is 3 meters long. Three divide, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Plus mass of the goodie basket, which we're told is 80 newtons. So the, the, the mass is the... The weight, mass times gravity, is 80 newtons. So that's going to be 80 times the length of the beam, which is 6, all over where the um, wire connects to the beam, which is at 6, times sine of the angle, which is 60 degrees. And this should give us the tension in the wire. I know it feels like a lot, and there's a lot going on in this diagram, especially with my big um, drawing, cartoonish, crayon marker-like arrows in this small, delicate picture. So I probably should have zoomed in a bit more. So 700 times 1 plus 200 times 3 plus 80 times 6 divided by 6 times sine of 60 degrees. And that gives us a value of about 342, I'll say 343, 342.6 newtons. That's going to be the tension in the wire. All right, so now that I think that was the difficult part, now we want to find Fx and Fy on the pivot. So we're going to go back to um, free body diagram, newtons, law, sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. So sum of all forces in the x direction are going to equal, um, so it's going to be force pivot x minus tension in the x direction, because those are the only two in the x direction. That's going to equal zero. So force pivot x is going to equal tension x, which is going to be tension times the cosine of theta which is going to be 60 degrees. And so this is going to be 342.6 times the cosine of 60 degrees. 
So this is going to be cosine of 60 degrees, which gives us a value of about 171.28. And that's going to be force pivot in the x direction. Now we're going to do the same thing to find the value in the y. So this is going to be a bit more, um, bit more values. So I'm going to bring this up here so I can look at my picture as I do this, because there will be many. So the I'm going to say that the values um, pulling up are going to be force pivot y, and we're also going to have tension in the y direction, and we're going to subtract from that force bear, uh, force gravity bear, minus force gravity beam, minus force gravity basket. Solving this for force pivot in the y direction, we have Um, force gravity bear. I know my notation should be more consistent. It is not force gravity beam plus force gravity basket minus uh, tension y. And tension y is going to be tension sine of theta. So this is going to become 700 plus I think 200, 200 plus 80, plus tension of y, which we said was 342.6, 342.6 times sine of theta. And if we get a positive number, then it's pushing in the up direction. If we get a negative number, then the force on the pivot is actually down, 700. So we take 342.6, we add to that 700, 280, and we multiply that 742 uh, 342.6 times sine of theta, which we know is 60 degrees. And I get 1276 newtons. So it, it is doing a lot of work holding up the uh, system. All right. If the wire can only withstand a maximum tension of 825 newtons, what is the maximum distance in meters that the bear can walk before the wire breaks? All right. So we're going to go back to this equation right here. And this is going to be part C. And so our bear is now in question. Because before that was one meter, now it's going to be something different. So now it's going to be tension, our beam, sine of theta, minus mass beam, g, our beam over two, minus mass goodie bag, times gravity, times R beam equals mass bear times gravity times R bear. Where really now I'm gonna now I can divide both sides by mass gravity of the bear. And we're given a value of tension, a new value of tension of 850 newtons. Nope, 825 newtons. 825 newtons. So from here then, we're going to do um, 825 times the distance of the beam, which is 6, times sine of theta, which is 60 degrees, minus mass of the bear times gravity, which we know was 700, 700, times the, di uh, nope, that's not the mass of the bear, that is the mass of the beam. Beam and bear, they should have used a different animal. I know, petty, petty complaint. 200 
times distance to the beam divided by 2, which is uh, 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Uh, this is, yep, mass of the goodie bag, which is 80 newtons, times the distance from the edge, which is 6. Yep. All over mass of the bear times gravity, which they tell us is 700. So, putting this all in to a calculator, calculator being Wolfram, we do 825 times 6 times sine of 60 degrees. I know you're probably not allowed to use Wolfram on your timed evolutions. It is a pleasure that I get to use it, but I understand that you will not be afforded such luxuries. 80 times 6 all over 700. Hmm. Maybe. We got an answer less than 6, so that seems reasonable. So 4.58 meters. So the bear can walk 4.58 meters before he exceeds 825 newtons. So let's see, when we had him at 1 meter, it was only 340. Yeah, that might be true. So he can go 4.58 meters before he exceeds the allowable tension of the wire, which would cause it to snap and fall. I assume everything one would be okay without injury. Probably not. We have a bear walking out into an I-beam to, to snatch a picnic basket. Seems like a hazardous situation. Okay, so to backtrack what we did real quick, this entire problem here is um, setting up free body diagrams. So we start by saying the sum of, when, when you have no angular acceleration, the sum of all torques is going to equal zero. And specifically, we can choose any pivot point we want. The pivot point we are going to choose, though, is the pivot point where um, the axis rotation is going to be at the point where there's forces we don't want to solve for. And so we put the pivot point at the pivot point of this axis. That way we don't have to immediately solve for force on the pivot in the y or x direction. The reason we don't have to solve for them is because they have a radius moment arm of zero. Zero uh, torque is uh, radius times force. That radius is zero and that torque is zero. So we just don't basically ignore it. Sum of all torques then is the torque of the mass of everything pulling down and the tension of the wire pulling up. No angular acceleration set equal to zero. All the clockwises equal all the counterclockwises. We math and then eventually get an answer. We do some trig involved. There are some sine and cosine. We then want to find the force on the pivot. To find the forces on the pivot, we do the exact same concept except looking at torque. We're now using looking at force equals mass times acceleration. And we're looking at linear, the linear equivalent here. And so to do that, we say a sum of all forces in the x direction, which is just the x component of the tension and the x of the pivot equals zero. We find that. We then do the same thing for the y direction, and that works out too. We're then given a scenario about, all right, we have this wire, maximum tension. We go back to our equation we wrote earlier, which totally true, basically the limitation for torque. And we're like, all right, we're gonna take that equation, but rearrange it, and now we're gonna solve for a new unknown variable, the radius of the bear, the moment arm of the bear, how far out the bear can be, after some math, brute force, and mental fortitude, we finally get an answer of 4.58 meters. So that's how we approach this, Paul. Those are my thoughts. Hope it helped. See you next time.